Okay, that was interesting. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. This is seven minutes in the morning. Let me get this little thing popped up here. There we go. Look at that. Hey, and a new request for you this morning. So I hope you had a magnificent Monday. It is Tuesday. Time for it to be terrific. Uh, yesterday, lots of man, fantastic comments uh, and whatnot going on during and after the show yesterday. Thank you all for that. You are the ones that make that possible. I just put the venue out there. You make all the magic happen. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Hey, as you arrive, whether you're watching live or on the replay, special request for you today. As always, please leave a comment and say hi. I love those. They encourage me. And I like to say hi back and see who's watching. But uh, as you leave that comment this morning, if you have a friend or someone that you know that could benefit from being a part of our conversations every morning, tag them in your comment. Just, you know, do the at sign and their name, and they'll get a notification that you think this is valuable content for them to check out. So, a couple of good mornings already. My bride has joined us. Good morning, dear. Uh, Jeremy, good morning to you. Uh, Ramona, Eric, thank you all for being here today. Yeah, Vicki says my bride was first today. Well, it should be easier for you, dear. You have a hint of when I'm about to begin. <laughs> oh, in all fairness, she is in the house and I'm out on the back porch. Speaking of which, back in, uh, back in the old digs today, just needed to change a venue yesterday. Shake things up a little bit and, uh, so, and who knows, we might have a surprise visit from the chicken this morning. I've heard her out there already. Keep an eye out back here over my shoulder. She might be walking around. All right, so don't forget, as you get here, leave me a comment, say hi, and tag somebody that you would like to share this video with so they can see it also. All right, so as I did yesterday, I'm going to base our discussion this morning off a comment, or not a comment, a quote. Uh, this one also comes from Jim Rohn. Got some good stuff coming from Jim here lately. Been reading some of his stuff, and uh, it's really powerful stuff. All right, so here is the quote, and, the, and the, uh, the title of the show today was The Education That Will Make You Wealthy. Here's the quote. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Why do you think that is? What's the difference between those two? Well, in one sense, and, and I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. You can go ahead and start uh, poo-pooing my thoughts if you want. <laughs> I think in most respects, what we consider a formal education today is way overrated and definitely overpriced. If you, if, you, if you go to school for the prescribed number of years and you get a certificate from that school that says you have achieved this level of education and you should be qualified for a particular role and then can't find a job in that role, something's wrong. The process is not working, right? Now, and I think that's a derivative of us as parents, and generationally we want the, the succeeding generations to be better equipped, have more opportunities than we had to, to, be, to do better than we did. And we culturally have decided that education is a great way to do that. So, that's what we do is we send our kids to school. And then they go to school and they don't learn anything. Here's where Jim's quote really pays off for you. Self-education will make you a fortune. Yes, I agree. There are valuable things that you can learn in school. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I have plenty of hours myself, but they're my hours, not the ones that the school told me I needed. Right? But a self-education will make you a fortune. In 2015... This is 17, 2015, read 63 books. I don't share that to brag, I share that to tell you 
that in 52 weeks I read 63 books. Now, there's a downside to that, and I've kind of pulled back from that goal. I actually started with the goal of reading a book a week and then just kept going after I met the goal. And I, I got exposure to a lot of great information, and then I had trouble with attributing it correctly and recall and whatnot, so I backed off of that a little bit. But here's the thing. Just take books as an example, and they're just one example. Right? If it took me, if I wrote a book and it took me three years to research the book and then another year to write it, that's four years worth of effort that's gone into compiling, and I, I don't have one within arm's reach, compiling, maybe under there, no, compiling all of that information into this form that you can digest it in about a week. I've compressed four years of learning, work, and effort into a week. Why would you not do that? You don't have to agree with everything that's in there. You just have to absorb it. Right? And that's just with books. I mean, take videos. We're doing a video right now. I am compressing years worth of experience, knowledge, some of it gained uh, at, at a high price, either financially or emotionally. I'm sharing that with you in just a few minutes so that you can take that synthesize that and apply it to your circumstance. Why? Why would you not do that? Right? But what we have decided kind of culturally, the, the, the uh, hipper thing to do is to sit and watch TV. TV, I call TV bubblegum for your brain. Right? You can sit there and chew, 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 chew and not get any nutritional value out of it at all. Every once in a while you'll hit program that gives you some nutritional value, some little nugget that is valuable. And yes, I also agree, and this is why I do, that there's entertainment value, and there is value in spending time with other people having that shared experience. Right? And the entertainment value lights up a different part of your brain. You need that part of your brain excited from time to time. Yes, that's good, but when I do that, I do it on my schedule, not theirs. I record everything and then go back and watch it on my schedule, and I can skip through the ads, unless I want to see some good ads. Anyway, the point is, you, yourself, uniquely, solely, limited only to you, you have the responsibility of self-development and self-education. And if you will take on that responsibility and do a good job, then your options are limited. Think about that for just a minute. If you will do, you can. There's a there's a book, there's a video for just about anything. I was talking with my neighbor, who you might be able to hear his truck running right now. Talking with him the other day about working on a vehicle. And like, yeah, well, I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. I went to YouTube. There's a video there that shows how to do it for this particular year, make, model. It's all right there, right there. In 10 minutes, he was able to find out how to perform a repair. I've done that. Is this something I can do, or is this something I need to take to somebody else? Anything you want to learn how to do is right there, either in a book, a webinar, a video, a white paper, a PDF, a coach. It's all right there. All you have to do is take responsibility for it and manage it yourself. All right, I see comments. Let's go through some of those. So, Joe Cop, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for being here. Karen, thank you for being here also. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Joe says it's not an education. It's an indoctrination these days. Yes. Just yes. I can't. I, I, I won't go any further into it than that. All right. The paper satisfies those looking for it. The paper won't get you through the interview. That's correct. Um, and, and in fact, that's the way I characterize it most of the time, that um, the paper might get you in the door. The paper will make an introduction. It, you, we've all heard this saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I agree with that 110%. If I know somebody, look, let me tell the story this way. For several years, I had a business helping lawyers present, perfect and present their case in court. Really, it's because it's just a, a play. But that's a whole other issue, right? 
So I help them perfect and present their case in court. Did I go to law school? Nope. If I ever argued a case in court? Nope. Right? But I had the ability to produce results for them. At the end of the day, what really matters is that you can produce results. It doesn't matter whether you own your own business, whether you're an employee. doesn't matter. If you can produce results, then you will be fortunate. Uh, not fortunate. <laughs> wealthy. If you can produce results, you'll be wealthy. That's it. That I mean, that's all that anybody cares about. But if I didn't know anybody when I was doing that work, and I, I was fortunate in the way that we began and that I had introductions. Were it not for those introductions, I would have to have some kind of credential that would get them to even talk to me. Once I got past the introductions, was able to produce results, then I could sell on the basis of my results and on the basis of this word of mouth uh, and testimonials from other people. But yes, sometimes the paper gets you in the door. And sure, there are things like being a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant. You need to learn some of the the fundamentals and the basics. But there's a reason why they call what those people do a practice. Look that up. Find out why they do that. Uh, I think this quote is attributed to Joe. It's scroll. Oh, no, there it is. There we go. Most teachers have never left the academy. Oh, my goodness. They have no real-world experience. I had a teacher. I had a professor. I got up and walked out of this class. <coughs> Whew, got, all, got all excited there. I had a professor, an accounting professor one time, that began the very first class by saying, I've never worked a day in this. I went to this high school, this college, this university, got my master's degree. Here I sit. If you have any questions about practical application, don't ask me. Wow. Yeah, that just, that messed me up. That was really the first, my first insight into how useless uh, aspects of the system are. Yep. Learning, however, is great, Vicky says. I agree with that. Karen says the traditional public education system was created to produce a nation of workers and consumers. You betcha. You betcha. I mean, just think about what they teach. And now, I, this is one of the challenges I have with, with the secondary, with the high school education. Now, you can't even graduate high school and balance a checkbook. Apply for a loan. Fill out. Obviously, they're not teaching it because you have, if you don't know that, you haven't looked at applications lately. You can't uh, get a bank account, fill out uh, any kind of application, pay your taxes, get a job. I mean, those are just basic things to live in today, right? Uh, see, y'all messed around and got me started on a hot topic for me. <laughs> uh, we're in a time that the general population requires constant entertainment. Absolutely. Ramona says... Uh, what? Well, I don't know if I can read all of that. There we go. Craziness of society is being able to acquire years of knowledge by aligning with people who are best in a certain field. Excel to being president of a company, yet because of having no degree, if one were to go to get a mainstream job, might have an average paying job. Absolutely. I can be the president of my own company. I can build... A Okay, here's a great example from somebody that I spend a lot of time reading. Tony Robbins. Right? Got out of high school. That was it. Now, he's done a lot to educate himself in the meantime. But he did that. He took on the mantle of that education. And, you know, the other thing that I think about is how did people learn how to do things before there were college or degree programs for it? Somehow that stuff got done anyway. Just saying. Education system needs an overhaul. I agree with that, Jeremy. Absolutely. People have actually sued companies because they sucked at an interview and blamed other factors for them not getting the job. Ah, I know. This is this is a mess. Unless you work for the government. Yep. Yeah, and actually Ramona's got a great point. If you can't get the job you want, go create it. That... That would be my number one advice as we leave our time here together this morning. Thank you for being here. Great stuff going on in the comments. Please keep that going. 
uh, as we even as we close out the video. And don't forget to tag somebody that you would like to share this video with this morning. But here's the number one piece of advice I'll give you. This is all based on this quote from Jim Rohn. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. All right? If you can't get the job you want, go make it. There's nothing stopping you. It's all in you. We all have this need to create. We are all, each one of us, uniquely gifted, talented, and placed to do work that matters. If you can't find that work, or if you can't impress, convince someone that you're capable of doing that work, go do it yourself. There's nothing stopping you except you. All right? That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Today is Tuesday. That means the radio show is on today, but I'm not going to be on the radio show today. We're actually running a uh, previously recorded episode. My guest today uh, is Dan Green. Dan has... uh, I met Dan a few months ago here in town. He is actually moving this week. Uh, So we recorded this episode a few weeks ago, not knowing for sure when we'll get to get it on the air. Uh, but it's a great one. He is the founder and owner of a company called Tough Man. They make, uh, he calls them Burt's Bees for Badasses. It's uh, like creams, lotions, potions, deodorant, that sort of thing. You should check it out. Dan's got some really cool stuff to say, and we're going to try and do a couple more episodes. That's going to play live on the radio. Um, and I'll, I've, It's already shown up in my Facebook feed, but I'll go put it back in the feed this morning about 8 o'clock. Uh, so you can see it if you missed it a couple of weeks ago when we recorded it live. All right, please keep those comments coming. I'd love to hear from them. Hey, if you are having trouble getting the results that you're looking for, I think I've got something that will help you jumpstart that process. It's called the Fast Five Program. It's in the top right-hand corner of my website, TomRigsby.com. Go there and check it out. I'll appreciate it. You'll get value out of it. Everything will be good. All right, that's it. Wrapping it up for today. Be back again tomorrow with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. You have a terrific Tuesday. Now i got to shut all this stuff off. Just like that. Just like that. So I can play you.